So this is our painting video for how to do the Dark Apostle. This is the new model that just came out um, in uh, April of 2019. Uh, it just released actually a couple of days ago, so we, we got it out as fast as we could. Uh, we were still tied up with the um, Lord Discordant. So that took a bit longer than we wanted. In any case, this model is now finished. I think it looks great. Uh, the kit actually comes with the Dark Apostle as well as two Dark Disciples. As you can see, this painting video does a, uh, a painting guide for all three units in the model, in the kit. Um, so hopefully you find this helpful. If you do like what you see here, then uh, stay tuned and I'll show you exactly what we did to get it to look exactly like this. Cheers! This here is going to be our painting video for the Chaos Space Marines Dark Apostle. And as you can see, the first thing we've done is prime them all with Chaos Black Rattle Spray. And that got us what we've got here. Uh, the only other thing to note is that he's actually not affixed to the base, which makes painting the underside of him a little bit easier. Um, the Dark Disciples are affixed to the base though, so we'll work from there. So I think the first thing we're going to start with are the robes. So we're going to start that with some Nagaroth Knight. So with a nice watered down layer, we're going to start doing the robes on the priest as well as the back cape and the front robes on the apostle. So it may take a couple of coats to make this show up, but we'll do that now. And then we'll meet back here once this is done. So now that we've finished our Nagaroth Knight, you can see that we very subtly did the front shirt as well as the underside of the cloak, the top half of the cloak, and the cloak passes in behind the uh, armor as well as the other side and stretches up past the shoulder pad. So we've done those three pieces here. On the priests, we did everything except for the sleeves coming out of the coat and this one leg, which we'll do it uh, in a different color. And in this fellow, we did the entire coat as well as the shoulders and then just left where the hands are and the sleeves are, which will stand out a little better when we get to those colors. So that's what we did with our Nagaroth Knight and we'll just allow that to dry. The next color I think we're gonna work with is some Mephiston Red. And what we're going to do is the um, candles along the back uh, backpack, as well as the candles on the top of the book. Uh, but the reason I chose it is just to get the inside of both cloaks here, which we're going to make red. Um, so we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So we've just finished with our Mephist in red. And as you can see, we did the handle of the staff as well as the candles in the back um, and then we did the back cover of the book uh, it'll be in the being a darker red but we'll start it with Mephist and red we did the candles on the back of this book as well as just the internal sleeves and for this one we did the inside of the robe as well as the inside of the robe here that's flared open and we did the the burning embers of the skull head so we finished with all those uh, we'll leave those to dry so our next color I think we're going to use is going to be Rackarth Flesh and with that we will start uh, base coating anything that we're going to put flesh toned or white so this is what it all looks like after we finished with our Rackarth Flesh and as you can see we did the hands and face of um, of this Dark Disciple, as well as the two scroll rolls on his back. Disciple number two, we just did the hands and the back of his head here. And now you can actually start to see some of the detail that will color in a little bit. And finally, for the Dark Apostle himself, we did the head, the book, the two strips. I did the straps on the holster. We got the three skulls on the bottom of the ground, as well as the other two straps of paper that are on the back um, backpack. 
So our next job is to start with the armor trim. So we're going to use a little bit of Retributor armor and we're going to start going over all of the trim. So this is what it looks like now that we finished our trim and as you can see here the book is done as well as the two shoulder leafs I guess as well as the um, the little ornament he's holding. He just has an ornament on his own and there's nothing else gold on him whereas the Dark Apostle has the trim behind his head, the shoulder pad trim like a normal Space Marine does as well as the back of the trim here, the back of the leg, the backpack with the candelabra, the trim on the book, as well as the other gauntlet. Uh, the box art leaves this uh, black. Uh, I painted the first one and I may turn it back black before I'm finished. Um, but these little lines should be highlighted there. I'll get them when I come back to later. As well, there is a star on the holster here but I'll get that after I've done the rest of the holster in brown so we'll just touch that one up toward the end. Our next step is going to be to do the metallic layers so the the metal the steel so we're going to use lead belcher for that and that is going to include the trim on the mace here as well as any of the little chains that he's wearing uh, the top of the gun in the holster um, on these guys here, he is wrapped in a chain, so we'll get that. And his entire incense burning skull thing is, is a chain, so we'll get that as well as the other end of the chain there. So we'll get all of these pieces. We'll meet back here again. We're going to use the lead belcher, and we're going to use the very watered down layer, so we'll probably do two coats. This is our unit now that we finished the silver. And what you see now is almost all of the base colors done with the exception of brown for the holster. So we'll probably do that next and then we'll uh, move on from there. To do our holster, what we're gonna take is a little bit of Rhinox hide and with our watered down layer and a detail brush. We're just gonna paint in the base coat for our leather. So with our Rhinox hide finished, what we ended up doing was the holster here, as well as the belt going around. You can definitely see the belt inside the cape there, right there. And then on this fella here, he's got a satchel purse, as well as the bindings for the scrolls, and he's got a belt that goes around as well. And this fella here has a very small belt. You can just almost see it there. And a trace of it goes in here underneath the um, chains. So with that, we are now finished our base layers for what we want to do for now. Uh, so we'll move on from there. So we're going to begin our shades now. And the first one we're going to use is Newland Oil. Because that's going to be most of what we need to do. With the new oil, we're going to do everything that's metal, so the arm joints, the chains, the respirator tubing, as well as everything that's purple. So that's all the, the uh, shirt here, the cloak, the uh, cape, as well as we'll do most of the uh, armor, but we hadn't really touched that at all either. Um, and then we're going to do pretty much all of this model, all of the the um, the cloak, the metallic incense holder. We're not going to do the face, we're going to do that with a different shade after. Um, but all of the cloak in the back, and we'll leave the scrolls because we're going to do that a different shade as well. And then with this fella here, the face, the chains, the cloak, uh, leaving the gold because we'll do that in a moment as well. So. We'll start with uh, with our Dark Apostle, and we'll just start coloring in with some shade all these areas here. Dry 
drive that shade into the recesses there. So we'll do that with the rest of them as well and we'll meet back here for the next color. With our Null Noil now finished, uh, as you can see we've done all of the chains and the, the spaces inside the gauntlets and everything like that. So these are all done. What we're going to do is move on to the second shade. And the second shade we're going to be using is Reclin Flesh Shade. And what we're going to do with that is actually the face as well as all of the paper banners. I'm going to do all the gold with it. We normally would use Agrax Earth Shade, but this will get it a little bit more of a redder color. He seems to be very much a light with fire. Uh, we'll probably do the candles as well. And pretty much the whole staff, uh, especially the, the, um, the grip of it here as well. So we'll do most of that on these guys here. I'm going to do anything that is skin. Uh, being aware to avoid the metal and then anything as well that's gold as well as the candles and on this fella here we're going to do the hands on the face and the little gold chain there uh, we'll leave the scrolls so we'll do those now just like so I'm going to leave a little bit extra to let it pool into the spaces of the book because this is going to turn into the writing of the book as well as it dries. So we want a good coating in there like so. And then same thing with all of these paper banners here. And we're going to keep moving on to the gold. Gives it that reddish look. And on the staff. Candelabra on the back. And then we're going to very lightly do the face. some of it forward so it can pull into that mark of chaos on his forehead sort of like that and that'll fill in there for a bit and then we'll go around and do the back side of the book and the gold and the candelabra and the other slips of paper so we'll leave that to dry we'll do the others and we'll meet back here now that all of our shades are dry what we're going to do is start doing our over highlight layer so the first thing we're going to do is shade the cloaks and we're going to start that with some Xerxes purple. So we're going to take a very, very dry brush. We're just going to start dry brushing that purple right over that cloak. Lightening it up a little bit. So we're going to do this for the rest of this cloak as well as for this guy's cloak. And then we're going to do the front of the Dark Apostles outfit. And we're going to do the very back of the cloak, but we're not going to do the inside because the inside we're going to do in a different shade of color in a few minutes. So we'll do all that and we'll meet back here. 
So this is our uh, units now that we've dry brushed on our Xerxes purple. And as you can see, they all have a nice highlight layer. So now we're going to move on from there to the next color we have. And the next color is going to be corn red. And actually what we're going to do with that is dry brush that on the underside of the cape here to add a red sort of layer to the cape. So that's our finished unit now. As you can see, we've got a very red undercoat with a very purple back coat on that cape and it adds a really nice effect. So with that, we're going to move on to a different set of colors. So the next unit we're gonna deal with is this uh, Dark Disciple here. And what we're gonna focus on is the book itself. So the book is more bronze than gold. So we're gonna take a little bit of Brass Scorpion and we're going to dry brush that right across that book. So something like that. As you can see, that differs quite a bit from the uh, rest of the gold, which we'll do in a few minutes. So the next highlight layer we're going to do is on the gold itself. We're going to take some Liberator gold and we're going to dry brush that right over these shoulder pads. Don't worry if you go over the black, it doesn't matter because we're going to come back and clean that up in a few minutes. What we're looking is to just add the shine and the highlight. So something like that, much, much brighter. Stands up much better than before. So we're going to move on to dealing with the paperwork here. So the first thing we're going to do is lighten up the book and the two ribbons as well as the ones on the back. So what we're going to do is a very dry brush of Screaming Skull, which should give us a nice light color there. Now the white's overpowering, so we want to make sure we don't have much of it there. So just like that, being careful not to go over the purple or over the gold because we're finished with those colors. We're going to do the rest of this and the ones in the back and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So while doing our Screaming Skull highlight, what we realized is that we missed one of our shades, the one that goes on the skulls down here as well as on the, um, the uh, handle of the, of the staff. So what we want to use is some Agrax Earthshade, which we just finished off. We're gonna Agrax Earthshade all of those skulls. So we'll let that dry for now. And then we're gonna come back and dry brush Screaming Skull over those skulls there. And then we'll meet back here. So as you can see, we finished off the skulls now. We also took the time to clean up the scrolls that we had forgot to, so they get Agrax earth shaded and then in Screaming Skull. So that finishes our Screaming Skull and our white highlight. This is that I still feel that the uh, capes are a little too dark. So I think I'm gonna put one more highlight layer of that, of which I'm gonna go Slanesh Gray. So that is a really, really, really light layer. So what we want to do is make sure we have a very, 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 very dry brush. And 
then once we have a very dry brush, just something like that to add just that little tiny bit of brightness there. We're gonna do we're gonna do the other uh, cloak, same as we did before. So just the back of this, this guy's robes, and the front chest piece, and we'll meet back here. So we finished with our slanesh gray, and we've got the areas highlighted that we like now, and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So what we're gonna do is move on to the metal highlights. So we're gonna take a little bit of iron breaker now, and we're going to dry brush on. and lighten up all of this metal work that we've got here. So that includes all of the chains, as well as the uh, decanter that's here as well. And then anything we've done metal here. So that's the elbow joints and a few of the tubing and cords and then the two tubes on the front half and then this little tiny chain. So we'll do those, we'll clean those up and we'll be right back here again in a few minutes. So we're finished now with the metal highlight. What we're going to work on now is this extra leg that's here. So this leg is a different color according to the box art. Um, he's got a blue sleeve blue sleeve and a blue undergarment. Um, so we're gonna work on that now. So what we're gonna do is put a base coat of Celeste Gray. Um, and we're just gonna use that very carefully to fill in this area. And lay down our foundation for our other color here. So this is our character after we finish putting the Celeste Gray on. And as you can see, it's a gray with a tinge of blue in it. So what we're gonna do now is take a little bit of Dragonhoff Nightshade, which is a blue shade. And we're gonna shade in all of that area there. And this will probably take a couple of coats to get the color that we want. As you can see, it gets instantly darker. And that's all the benefit of the Celeste Gray. Now for our next color, now that the shade is dried here, we just want to add one more highlight layer there. So I think um, Blue Horror is probably the best one to choose. It's a very, very light color. So we want to make sure there's not much of it on your brush. So we're going to start dealing with the flames and the dripping um, ooze here out of the book. So we're going to start with a base coat of Ceramite White. With our fine detail brush here. We're going to start painting all of the details. Catching into the book where it starts from. And then the flame is on all of the back um, spokes here. So we're going to do both of those, meet back here when it's done. So this is what it looks like now that we've done our Ceramite White. And we've gotten all of the flames. We've gotten the ones on the front here and on the three posts. We've gotten the, the liquid that drips down. And on the back, the flames travel slightly over the book. So we've got all of that done as well. So that takes care of our flames. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of uh, Retributor armor and we're going to detail in all of these um, 
little details of the chalices that are holding the flaming embers. So we'll add that in there first and then meet back here. So that's where we're at for the chalices uh, colored in with Retributor Armor. And what we're ready to do now is add the Cassandadori Yellow as a shade. And we'll just start coloring in a lot of this area here. So in this case, we're going to want to dry it upside down because we want as much of that shade to run to the ends as possible. Like that. So we're going to do the other three sets of flames as well as the oozing drip stored upside down so the ink runs and we'll meet back here afterwards. Essentially, these are our units now that we finished with the Cassandra shade of yellow. So now we're going to start working that fire up. So the first thing we're going to do is take a little bit of Troll's Lair Orange. And we're going to start coloring the end pieces of these flames here. They actually don't have to be neat and the more jagged the better. Something like that there. Now while we're at it, we're going to take this particular skull. And we'll kind of color in his eyes, as well as the area around it. that and then we'll leave that for a few moments and let both of those layers dry continuing with our flames what we're going to do now is build off of the orange and add some wild rider red and we're just going to go a little bit higher up from the orange where the orange had been once again doesn't have to be neat Look at the blend colors. So sort of like that. Now that our Wild Rider Red has dried, what we're going to do now is find another way to blend those colors a little bit better. So we're going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow. And with a dry brush, we're just going to highlight over some of those other colors. different amounts of tones, making that yellow brighter or darker. And blend up quite nicely now. We're also going to take our Uriel Yellow. And fill in the inside eyes of that skull there, just like so. So now that that highlight layer is finished, we're going to take a little bit of Mephiston Red. And 
just brush on some toward the top half, just the tips of the flames there. And now that our Mephiston red has dried, we'll take one more last bit of corn red. And do the very tips. Just like so. And then we're also going to take that corn red. And dry brush that. Right over that skull. Just like that. Finally, it's time to deal with these candles. And we'll take a little bit of that Wild Rider red we used earlier. We're just going to paint over a dry brush highlight. Something like that. Some of these candles have fire on them. So we're going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow. And just touch up anything that has a flame. Now that our fire is finished, what we're going to do is move on to just take care of the smoke coming into this out of this uh, incense decanter. So what we're going to do first is a back base layer of Mechanica Standard Grey. Start laying the groundwork for our smoke. Now while we're also doing this, we're going to do that stone that's underneath the Dark Apostle's foot, minus the skulls that are there. So we'll do both of those things and we'll make it right back here. This is what it looks like once you're finished with your standard gray. What we're going to do now is add a shade of Nulin Oil to that, as well as adding a shade of Nulin Oil to the rocks in the ground. And then while we're at it, we have one more thing we want to shade, which was his eyepiece right here. We never did get around to shading that. That's going to go Nulin Oil as well. So we'll do these three things here, and then we'll comfortably be back here afterwards. So once our Nulin Oil shade is done, what we're going to do is take a dry brush of Dawnstone, We're just going to brush that right over. We're leaving us with that kind of effect. So we'll do the same thing with the smoke and we'll make back here in a little bit. So with our smoke finally finished being dried, what we're going to do now is the last layer on that with some Ushabti Bone, which is a off-white white. Um, very beige. We're looking for a very dry brush. An inconsistent application. Just in some key spots there. So we're going to finish off the face of our Dark Apostle. Now, he's pretty good now. If you want to leave him like this, that's perfectly acceptable. I want to make his face a little paler and try to bring out that um, chaos scar on the, his forehead as well as some of the eyes and the mouth and such. So what I'm going to do 
Okay, so I'm going to start with a very dry brush of Rackarth Flesh going over what we had there originally, which was, of course, Rackarth Flesh. Something like that there. Now that we've finished that, we're going to do one more little highlight layer. And it'll be with Palette Witch Flesh. And it'll be an exceptionally dry brush layer. So that is way too strong. That's about right there. And we're going to just do that. I'm putting the face highlight there. Just to bring out that face with just a little tiny bit more detail. So now that we've got his face finished being painted, the final details are going to go on with just a shade. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of Newell Oil and we're going to try to drop that right into both eyes. And we're going to take a little bit of Carolberg Crimson, which we're going to try to drop into the mouth. And with that, the last of our detail layers are complete. So we only have a couple of things left to do, but it's time to do the most obvious thing, which is Abaddon on black. And we're gonna go over all of the black panels on the armor now, because all of our dry brushing is done. And this will cover any mistakes we made along the way. like so and what we'll do is do the rest of the armor and we'll meet back here in a few minutes so this is our unit now that we finished with the black trim so we only have a couple more things to do uh, we have to base them but before that uh, this particular unit here we uh, also colored in the trim of the cords that are holding his um, robes on and then we Agrax Earth Shaded in there as well, just to uh, clean that up a little bit. Now, one of the other things we have an option to is to add some rust to this book. So, uh, Nihilac Oxide here is what we're going to use. Just something like that there for now. I'll wash some of it around there. will have our desired effect once it dries. So as you can see here, we've now completely finished our models. Um, we, um, since the last step, we had based them. As well, we did a Thunderhawk blue 
uh, edge trim on the black armor, uh, and then we clear coated them. So what you see here is the finished product, and uh, it looks pretty good. Hopefully yours turn out quite as nice, and uh, if that's the case, I hope you enjoy playing with them on the table. They do look great. Uh, it is a good model. It's It's got lots of detail. Um, it's a little bit delicate as far as the um, incense decanter on uh, on the small model and the papers that hang off of the uh, Dark Apostle himself. These things tend to be a little bit delicate if you drop them, so just be careful. Um, that's pretty much it as far as it goes here. If you found this video helpful, please like the channel. Uh, and subscribe. It really, really helps out things and uh, moves our count up a little higher. Um, like the video. Uh, leave a comment if you're pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, these ones were a little bit tricky to do, but I, I did it so enjoy them. Um, and otherwise than that, we will see you at the next painting video we do.